Ever heard of Sambo? It's not just another martial art. It's an enthralling fusion of combat techniques, seamlessly integrating the best of judo, wrestling, and striking arts. But its uniqueness doesn't end there. This martial art has forged some of the world's most illustrious fighters, reshaping their careers in unexpected ways. Think of legends like Fedor Emelianenko, Habib Nurmagomedov, and Islam Makachev. All Sambo masters who've revolutionized the world of martial arts. In the following interviews, we'll meet practitioners of Sambo in Australia and explore their journeys and discover the profound ways this art has impacted their lives. Hi, I'm Byron. I'm 25 years old and uh, well, my day job is being a music tutor and a, a composer, but outside of that, I'm a professional athlete for, for Samba. Hi, my name is John. Uh, I'm 19 years old and I've been doing Samba for about six months now. Well, um, in my family, a lot of people did like lots of sports. So my grandpa, for example, he was a professional basketballer. My uncle, he was um, competitive in water polo and my cousins did like boxing. So really I kind of didn't really have a choice in what I do. So like, it was like either sport or nothing. So yeah, my first sport was rhythmic gymnastics because my parents thought I was gonna be a girly girl and they sent me to do that. But like, I found it really boring. So um, later at five or six years old, I switched to Sambo. When I was about six years old, my mother was teaching at Flinders University and I'd watch the kendo club training downstairs. I remember asking her at the time, but she didn't like the idea of her six-year-old son going around screaming and hitting other people with sticks, so I had to wait. And when I was around nine, ten years old, uh, I actually ended up giving my brother a huge cut over the eye. We were hitting each other with broomsticks, and uh, she called up the club and she said, uh, you're going you're gonna to take my son in now and show him some discipline and show him it's not about actually hitting people like that. And so, yeah, um, in terms of my serious martial arts training, uh, that's where it started. I've done stuff from like rugby to water polo, but nothing's really like clicked as much as Samba has just because um, I guess it's also, it's not only just a sport per se, it's kind of like a philosophy as well, like knowing how to handle yourself specifically. Like I've always been very interested in that. Like, um, you know, growing up, I was always kind of kept away from the more like I guess the more physically violent kind of side of things. I started doing Sambo around five to six years old and that was when I switched from rhythmic gymnastics to Sambo because I felt like I could enjoy myself more while doing like rough sports because I don't know it just made me feel like powerful and strong. Um, my first competition was actually a Brazilian jiu-jitsu competition which we went to as our whole Sambo group in Adelaide and um, we didn't have really good results because we didn't really learn the rules, but um, our coach said that we had to try out. So we would test our power and see what we, what we can be out of the club. I was consistently training kendo, um, but eventually I traveled to Japan. By the time I'd come back, uh, I'd met my fiance and uh, she's from Russia. I'm half ethnically Ukrainian as well. And so I figured I'd give Sambo a visit and brush up on my uh, language skills. Um, that said, after I went there, I actually had a really, really um, positive experience. You know, because I'm a performing musician, uh, it was very important for me to know how to defend myself because usually um, you're performing in very kind of, you know, dodgy places, very late at night. You have to know how to take care of yourself, your gear and like not lose everything because, you know, if, if I were to lose all of my stuff, it would probably like put me out of action for at least a couple of months or something like that. It's, um, yeah, so knowing how to take care of myself is very important for me as like, you know, moving into adulthood. It's pretty, you know, up there and on like the list for me. I'm currently practicing Sambo three times a week for two hours. Um, I'm entered in two dance schools and I'm doing piano for uh, two hours a week. Um, I'm also doing athletics for running and cross country. I feel like doing Sambo helps me be more strong and have more strength in running. Like I don't give up as easily because of 
what I've been through in Sambo and uh, right now I'm, I have a scholarship to one of the best schools in Adelaide. So I've also really enjoyed how quickly it's made me strong because it's, it's kind of a different strength than most other sports. It's like heavily calisthenics based and you know body power and body uh, like uh, you know just body weight movements and stuff like that. Um, but it's also muscles that you never thought existed. Like we've been doing stuff with our hands that, you know, uh, it's just ridiculously impossible. Like finger push ups, it hurts, but it's, you know, it's really good. And seeing such a grand physical transformation in such a short period of time was just really, you know, um, cool to see. Where there's a, where there's a wide variety of physical skill involved. And if you're tensing up or you're stressed, uh, there's no chance of you getting through the training that day and it, what it does is it forces you to relax and sort of enter into that zen like state. I reckon it helps me because like it sort of requires you to have a lot of stamina and by doing that I can cope with other tasks more easily. It also requires you to be fast and like know how to solve a problem in a critical situation so it's like inspires me to be a critical thinker, a fast problem solver and things like that. Because um, one second you could be doing cartwheels, handsprings and flips and the next second someone's grabbed you and they're about to throw you and you've just got to process all those different things and the minute after that if you're a combat sample practitioner and you're throwing punches and you just have to be in this constant flow like state where you're ready to do one thing to the next. It makes you very calm, it's very good to release a lot of like um, built up energy I guess over the day and um, yeah it's just made me a lot more of a it's counterintuitive, but it's made me a lot more of a calm person. Out of everything there is, I think the community is the most important, just because of the fact that um, you know, you're throwing each other around, like, and you're punching each other and you're like kicking each other, obviously in a controlled environment, but it's, um, there's, there's a kind of like unspoken respect that you have for not only like the people you're doing it with, but just like, I don't know, people in the world really, like you, you really get a sense of, you know, um, you want to take care of other people because you don't want to subject them to like the um, pain that you feel in the session, I guess. Um, in Sambal, when you rock up, you've just got, you've got red or you've got blue and all that means is that's the gear you had in the car that day, um, which is something I really, really appreciate. In my first few training sessions, um, I wasn't valued as a new member. I was valued for all the martial arts experience that I had and and how much of that applied to Sambo. And because of that, I, I felt more welcomed. I didn't feel like people were trying to posture in me or um, they felt threatened by me being there. They were just happy that I was there. And but for now, I think I'm just gonna focus on like making more friends and like being a part of Sambo, like in the world, like entering competitions around states, visiting new people um, and making more friends, I guess. And I really think that's because people really enjoy being there, enjoy seeing each other, enjoying the community uh, and the support network that it creates for each other. And we have a really unique opportunity now um, where Samo is communicating with the International Federation really well um, and we can basically make it grow just like other martial arts such as Judo and, and Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. So recent, recently we've just opened up all of the other federations and with this means we can have national competitions. What we have now is a relationship with the federation where they can check our coaches and qualify us and make sure everything is, you know, all in order. With, uh, in terms of future goals with Sambo, uh, I really do just want to continue like what we're doing now in terms of like, I, I still want to get fitter, I still want to get um, a bit more, you know, quick with my technique and everything like that. But um, I think, you know, if I stick to it and I train, you know, more often than I am now and I, you know, I can see myself doing that, I really think I might have a chance to, you know, get, you know, some moderate success in it and like, you know, doing competitions and stuff like that. As you may know, in 2032, the Olympic Games are planned to be held in Brisbane and I'd be really honoured to represent my country. Like, I love this country, I love its culture. I'd be really honoured to represent it in Sambo, in the women's team. By the time the Brisbane Olympics rolls around, um, I'll probably be a bit of an old man in my 30s. Um, so I'm not sure how I'll stand against the young guys from, um, especially Eastern Europe, but I'd like to give it hell and give it a good go and just sort of, you know, set that sort of example for the rest of the people who really want to achieve their dreams and, and sort of uh, 
gain something from Sambu and martial arts as a whole.